in a lot randomly mating population remains constant generation after generation in the absence of certain factors namely mutation genetic trip genetic recombination gene flow and ms what is called the natural selection that is the definition for hardy winkel principle stable and constant because of the absence of these factors if any one of these factors is met with now the hardy winkel equilibrium is possible it is not at genetic equilibrium so what is genetic equilibrium the proportion of dominant allele with a recessive allele together forms 100% or together form discrete unit 1 that is called genetic equilibrium if there is any change in the gene frequency or genotype frequency we have variation resulted so when an individual is in hardy winkel equilibrium there is no evolution of new species because evolution resulted when there is a change in gene frequencies in a population over time so without gene frequencies there is no that is what is called evolution hence the individuals or population in hardy winkel equilibrium is not evolving it remains the same without any variations without the formation of new species this is one cause so evolution results due to change in the allelic frequencies over time here in hardy winkel equilibrium there is no change in gene frequencies or gene genotype frequencies or set of alleles so we have it is in constant state in what we have it remains constant hence there is no evolution so population in hardy winkel equilibrium is not evolving If the population is in hardy winkel equilibrium, what would happen? The gene and genotype frequencies are set of alleles in a population will remain same from generation to generation. Hence, population in hardy winkel equilibrium is not evolving because evolution is a change in gene or genotype frequencies in a population. But here it remains constant; it is at a genetic equilibrium. Hence, there is no formation of new species. If there is any variation in hardy winkel equilibrium that results in the formation of a new species but here it is same remaining same for a number of generations but when it is normally actually there is occurring remain same i mentioned already a set of conditions required not to evolve we have i mentioned about the mutation we have what is called the natural selection then we have gene flow or migration the genetic recombination genetic trip if these factors are absent then only this hardy winkel equilibrium is possible again hardy winkel equilibrium is possible only for large population again i am telling you it is possible only for randomly mating population random mating means a normal mating that occurs in an environment that is not preferential mating it is not assorted mating as man made So, for example, preferential mating, man is making the mating between what is called a lion and tiger. This is called preferential mating. But in natural mating process, a random mating process, every individual has a chance to mate. It is mating randomly and without any preference for a particular genotype. That is called random mating. So, large population, randomly mating population, sexual and mendelian population. In the absence of the factors, what I mentioned. Now. Let us take an example. If the population is large, with reference to the details. Now, if we are taking what is called actually the gene frequencies or allele frequencies in a population, there are two types of alleles. One, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Let us take a large population. The population is infinitely large, not small one, infinitely large. Let us take the beta population. Now let's take the example of large beta population. And as per the color is concerned, there are two different phenotypes. One is dark color one, there is a black, another one the light color one. Now this is about the phenotypes. If you are analyzing the genotype for any character, you can have three different genotypes. It may be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. 
Now the individual which are former sex dominant or heterosex dominant are dark colored beetles. So they have the genotypes either that is homozygous dominant or heterosex dominant genotype. As per the light is concerned, they have homozygous recessive genotype. That's why I say for any population, for any character, we have three different types of genotypes. Though we have the phenotypes or two alternatives, but we have three genotypes. That is a one. So we can calculate the gene frequencies only through the number of genotypes. So we cannot calculate simply collecting the genes from the individuals. It is impossible. We have to count the number of homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. Then only can calculate the frequency of either genes or genotypes. That is called allelic frequency or genotype frequency. So the percentage of an allele is called allelic frequency. We are expressing in terms of what is called percentage or in terms of what is called fractional value. Now, here I am taking what is called the dark. The dark color is produced by a dominant allele capital A. This is produced by dominant allele capital A. The light color is produced by a recessive allele that is a small A. So when this recessive allele is present in homozygous condition, the indicator is light. And now this is light and this is what we have the dark. Now, as per the Hardy-Weinberg principle, they are giving some letters for dominant allele and recessive allele. For example, just P. It refers to dominant allele frequency. G frequency, allele frequency. That is P of A. Okay, maybe like that. For P of A is equal to, for example, taking 0 0.3. This is P of A. So, P refers to the dominant allele frequency. Now, Q refers to the recessive allele frequency. For example, small a. Let's take for example 0 0.7. I already mentioned the genetic equilibrium. That is the proportion of P and Q remains constant and constitute what is called 100% or 1. For example, P plus Q is equal to 1. Or we can say 100%. In terms of percentage, this is in terms of what's called frequency. So, in this population, the proportion of the dominant allele and then the recessive allele together constitute 1 or 100 percent. This is called genetic equilibrium. If you know the value of 1, for example, if you know the value of Q, then you can get the value of P. So, P is equal to 1 minus Q. Or if you know the value of what is called actually that is P, then you can calculate the Q value 1 minus P. So this is a simple way of calculating what is called the gene frequencies. So we want to calculate gene frequency P plus Q is equal to 1, where P is equal to dominant allele frequency and Q is equal to recessive allele frequency. Then P is equal to 1 minus Q or Q is equal to 1 minus P. This is what we have. But we cannot calculate the gene frequency directly. Because individuals are available as homozygous dominant, or heterozygous dominant, or homozygous recessive. By counting the number of these individuals only, gene and genotype frequencies can be calculated. So we have taken already a large population of beetles where the dominant gene frequency is equal to 0 0.3 and the recessive gene frequency is equal to 0 0.7. So a genetic equilibrium is equal to 1. Now, we want to calculate the gene frequency. It is impossible to collect the genes. So, you have to calculate first the genotype frequencies. That way, you can calculate the gene frequencies. It's possible because the individuals are formed in three different forms homozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant, and then homozygous recessive. For calculating, so this is a formula for calculating the gene frequency a plus a is equal to 1. And at genetic equilibrium, P is equal to dominant allele frequency, Q is equal to recessive allele frequency. This is about what we have with reference to that is the first one. Now, if you want to calculate the genotype frequency, the formula would be P plus Q whole square is equal to 1. As we have three different types of genotypes. So if we expand this one, it will get P square, 2PQ, and Q square is equal to 1. That is taking the genotype frequencies. Now P square is equal to homozygous dominant genotype frequency. Now 2P is equal to heterozygous dominant genotype frequency. 
and then Q square is equal to homozygous recessive genotype frequency. Now, if you are taking those values for P square, already we have just P is equal to 0 0.3, so 0 0.9. So, this is what we have that is P square. Then Q square, so it is equal to what is called 9%. In fraction, we are getting 0.9. Then 2PQ, so that is equal to 2 into 0 0.3 into 0 0.7. That is equal to another one zero point. That is uh, 42. That is equal to 42 percent. This is heterozygous dominant frequency. If you are taking what is called Q square, its highest nature. You see that one 0 0.7 into 0 0.7. We have what is called 0 0.49 or 49 percent. So this is the genotype frequency. That is dominant genotype of 9 percent. Then there is heterosex dominant of 42% and Q square of 49%. First now though I mentioned about the genotype frequency first. We can calculate first the genotype frequency. For example, if you are getting 9% for P square, then it easily can calculate the root of 9, you can get 3. So this is the way. So these are the values. Now the individuals in genetic equilibrium, the hard equilibrium has a percentage of 9%, 42% and 49% respectively for the different just genotypes. So this is a one. So if you take the individuals remains constant in the genotype frequency, now the population is to be in hard equilibrium. So in that hard equilibrium, we have the dominant genotype, genotype frequency 9%. 2 peak, there is more for headers is down at 42% and Q square 49%. Here I given one problem how to calculate what is called the gene frequency. So, I am taking the population size about 200. Now, in that one, homozygous dominant individuals 114 because the individuals are available in three different forms. From this one, we can calculate the gene frequency. Then, heterozygous individuals 76. And then, homozygous recessive individuals 10. Total of 200. Then, the question is calculate dominant gene frequency and recessive gene frequency. Now what is the formula adapted? Now I am taking dominant gene frequency. For calculating the dominant gene frequency, the formula 2 into number of homozygous dominant. Why we are multiplying 2? Because we have 2 dominant genes like this. As we have 2 dominant genes. So I am multiplying the alleles as we have 2 alleles by 2. Plus number of heterozygous dominant. Here only 1 allele. That's why I am not multiplying. That's only 1. Capital here to capital X. So 2 into number of homozygous dominant plus number of heterozygous dominant divided by 2 into total number of individuals. For calculating P, now 2 into total number of individuals 140, the heterozygous, actually total number of individuals for homozygous dominant, and this is heterozygous dominant, and total 200 multiplied by 2, so we are getting 0 0.76. This is what is called dominant allele frequency. So P is equal to 0 0.76 or that is we can say what is called 76 percent. 76 percent. If you know the value of one allele, you can calculate the value of another allele. So if P is equal to 0 0.76, then Q is equal to 1 minus P. So 1 minus P is equal to, you see that 1, 1 minus 0 0.76. That is equal to 0 0.24 or is equal to 24 percent. So 76 plus 24 percent constituting 100 percent that is a genetic equilibrium. This is the genotype frequency of dominant homozygous. This is a genotype frequency. First one we calculate the genotype frequency. Now this is a gene frequency, not the genotype, gene frequency of dominant allele. Then this is a gene frequency of recessive allele together form 24 percent okay so what we are getting this is what we have p we are calculating 
Now, how to calculate Q? The same formula we have to take it, I represent it. By using the same method, we can also calculate what is called recessive gene frequency, what is called Q. Now, in the previous one, I have taken two number of homozygous dominant. Here we are calculating the recessive gene frequency, that's why I am taking two number of homozygous recessive. Others not disturbed. The same number of heterozygous dominant, that is plus, and then two into total number of individuals. Accepting this one, the board and change. Now the same formula, so you have to verify that one, whether Q is equal to 0.24 or 24 percent. Now the same formula, you know, just we have 2, the number of just recessive one 10, the number of what is called the heterozygous dominant 76, and just 2 into 200. So we have, that is uh, 96, 400, now 24 times, then 100 times, then we have that is 0 0.24 or 24 percent. See, the value is very fine. So here we are getting what is called 24 percent, the same value. So back the formula we are changing, 2 into, that is number of homozygous recessive plus number of heterozygous dominant, divided by 2 into 200. So the same value what you are getting in the previous one by making just the formula Q is equal to 1 minus P. The same one what we are getting by using the formula. This is problem number 2. I want to give one more problem to understand that one. So another problem to find out either the dominant gene frequency or recessive gene frequency. Here the total number of individuals in a population is about 1600. Homozygous dominant 256. Calculate dominant allele frequency and recessive allele frequency. First we have to calculate the genotype frequency. What is called? It is given homozygous dominant. So we have to calculate homozygous dominant genotype frequency. So out of 600 we have 256 individuals. Then for 1 or for 100, 0.16. So it is equal to 16%. Now we calculate P, P square. So from which we can calculate what is called P. That is equal to, you know that one root of 0 0.16, that is equal to 0 0.4 or just what we call 4 percent. That is, we can say in terms of that one forty percent. Okay, then that is a 16 percent that is different. We cannot make that one, but here we have to calculate one P plus is equal to, that is 1. Now from this value, once we calculate P or Q, we can get the value of another one because Allele frequency is nothing but the proportion of allele as compared with other allele present in that locus. So Q is equal to 1 minus P. So we have 1 minus 0 0.4 that is equal to 0 0.6 that is equal to 60 percent. Okay, now P plus Q is equal to 1 as we have arrived at the genetic equilibrium that is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6 is equal to 1. This is another problem. To understand the hardy weinberg equilibrium, I have given another problem. Here, direct problem. So, in a population, the homozygous recessive genotype frequency is 0 0.36. Calculate a dominant gene frequency, a dominant allelic frequency, and recessive allelic frequency. What is given is nothing but homozygous recessive genotype frequency. Homozygous recessive genotype frequency, that is 0 0.36. So from this one you can calculate Q, so it is equal to 0 0.6. If you know the value of Q, you can calculate P, P is equal to 1 minus Q, that is 1 minus 0 0.6, that is equal to 0 0.4. So this is dominant allelic frequency, sorry, this is a, sorry, this is a recessive allelic frequency, this is a dominant allelic frequency. This is a direct problem, you can find out very easily, many times came in the question paper and linked. Now, also in our question paper, we are expecting that one. Okay, understand the problem and do the answers. Now, how do you bring back assumptions? The meaning for that one, when 
Holy Minbab equilibrium is possible. I mentioned already. So the gene frequency or genotype frequencies remain stable and constant generation after generation. Only when, the, when certain factors are fulfilled. Now number one, want to just maintain the equilibrium. No mutation occurs. There is no new genes being produced by mutation. Or we have the genes are duplicated or deleted. No duplication of genes, no deletion of genes, no formation of new genes by mutation. Then only we have P plus is equal to 1. No gene flow. This is nothing but the migration of genes. The migration of genes occurs either through the gametes or through the individuals due to interbreeding. So the migration occurs. Because of entry of individuals, that is called immigration. That causes the increase in number of individuals in a population. Or become emigration, that is exit from the population. That results in decrease in number of allelic frequencies. Okay. So neither the gametes nor the individuals enter or exit the population. So that is caused the gene flow should not be there, a negative one. So this is also a negative, this is also a negative. And no natural selection. So, no natural selection. All the individuals are allowed to survive. All the individuals are allowed to fit and survive and reproduce. So, they fit to survive and reproduce. No selection falls on the individuals. Then only we have a P plus is equal to 1. So, all these three are negative forces. Now, random mating. So, you should have random mating, not preferential mating. Non-random mating changes the gene frequency. Non-random mating. This is called preferential mating. Assorted mating. For example, mating between a lion and tiger. What is random mating? Any mating that occurs in nature. If it is forced to do so by means of man's activities, then it's called preferential mating. Now in the case of random mating, each and every organism has a chance to mate in nature. And the mating should be random with each other. Okay? There is no preference should be given for a particular genotype. You should not select a particular genotype. They should normally just like mate with each other naturally or is present in nature. That is called random mating. If it is in prefer preference in mating, for example, assorted mating we can say also. A lion and tiger in cages. We are doing that one. We are making the individuals to mate. But it is what is called alters the gene frequency by the lion or tiger. Now, law of the size. Now, genetic trip is possible only for small population. But for hard in equilibrium to operate, for hard in equilibrium to operate, we need a large size of population. Then only hard in equilibrium is possible. Suppose if any one of these assumptions were not made, then the population is not in hard equilibrium. equilibrium. So only if changes occurs in allelic frequency from generation to generation, then only evolution will take place. If there is no genetic changes, that means there is no change in allelic frequencies from generation to generation, there is no allelic frequencies. So, normally this hard member equilibrium helps the geneticists to calculate when evolution occurs. That means, when there is a deviation from this hard member equilibrium, variations occurs. That shows that one evolution is occurring. So, evolution is a departure from hard member equilibrium. Evolution is a departure from hard member equilibrium. The meaning for that one, when the Genetic equilibrium is disturbed when the allelic frequencies has been changed because of various factors, then ultimately there is no evolution. So, ultimately there is no evolution. Sorry, if you have changes taking place, there is an evolution. If there is no changes taking place in the genes, there is no evolution. That's why I say, hard wind bug equilibrium is a departure. That means change in allelic frequency causes or disturbs the hard wind bug equilibrium, leading to what is called evolution? That's why I say evolution is a departure from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.